propaganda has become the primary means in achieving the desired goal of social engineering, whether it is promoting a product, a political campaign, or a war. This tactic has been weaponized and employed by the deep state for political, social, and economic gains to maintain power through the divide and conquer tactic. We see these tactics used by the mainstream media and members of the pseudo-alternative media, most recently by promoting political and racial division. The Young Turks, for example, have been accused of being funded by billionaire George Soros. According to the Media Consortium website, you will see among the Soros-funded outlets such as Democracy Now!, the Young Turks are indeed listed as a TMC member. Under the About Us slash Supporters section of their website, you will find the Media Democracy Fund. Documents obtained from the hack of George Soros's Open Society Foundation show millions of dollars pouring into media organizations, and among them you will find the Media Democracy Fund. I love the conspiracy theories that people put out there. Oh, Qatar owns you, or Al Gore, or Soros, or Saban. None of that is remotely true, it's never been true, it's been nothing but lies. The Young Turks have repeatedly denied receiving any money from Soros, but have openly welcomed the proposition. Another thing that I found really interesting about this is, you know, the demonization of George Soros. And so a lot of conservatives will attack their opponents by saying that they're funded by George Soros. We're accused of being funded by George Soros, which I think is hilarious because we kind of want to be, but we're not, <laughs> right? So like if we were, it's not like something we'd hide. We'd like openly accept it and we'd be like, awesome, we got funding from George Soros. There's nothing wrong with that. Now onto the George Soros point. When is that guy gonna give us money, man? I know, I'm okay. looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, why, we've been waiting for a decade here. Everybody talks, George Soros, George Soros, where is he? Look, if you got his email, send it to me, okay? Because, George, call me. Okay, okay we haven't so, gotten a nickel from the dude. And everybody keeps writing about how we keep getting money from this guy. No, and look, and here's the thing. We're opening, openly admitting that we would love money from George Soros. Recently, the Young Turks secured an investment deal for $20 million. While we did not find any money directly from Soros in that deal, here's what we did find. According to Business Insider, four separate companies invested at least $20 million into the Young Turks. Those companies are E Ventures, 3L Capital, Graycroft, and Wincrow. 3L Capital was founded in February of this year, 2017, by Dave Larrier and Sean Colo. Dave Larrier and his wife Alicia are both members of the Aspen Institute, whose events are frequented by high-ranking officials from the State Department, the World Bank, the German Marshall Fund, as well as Henry Kissinger, George Soros, and the Clintons, just to name a few. Dave Larrier is also currently the chairman of OMAS, who helped raise money for the Clinton Foundation. Lair was also longtime friends with the late Don Gevertz, who was a major Democratic fundraiser, and was appointed by Bill Clinton to be the ambassador to Fiji. Graycroft founder Alan Patrickhoff is also a member of the Aspen Institute and a financial backer of the Clintons. Alan, you're also very involved in politics. Why? Mm -hmm. Big Democratic fundraiser. I was not in politics, involved at all in politics, not at all, until 1988. I met Bill Clinton out in East Hampton, Long Island, at a party, and uh, did you ever think that he'd be president? Absolutely, I was certain he would be. Uh, as soon as he decided, I formed something called the Entrepreneurs for Clinton Gore. One thing led to another, so I, in effect, got on the Clinton train very early, and then when Hillary ran, I got involved with Hillary's campaign and uh, happy to do so. And you know, it's always fun to back a winner. So you think she's going to win? I'm certain. Patrikov served as the chairman of the White House Conference on Small Business Commission in the Clinton administration from 1993 to 1995. Under President Obama, Patrikov sat on the Global Advisory Board of Endeavor and the Initiative for Global Development Leadership Council. Patrikov also served two terms as a member on the board of directors of the Millennium Challenge Corporation from 2007 to 2012. According to MCC documents, they received support from 15 regional and country specialists including the State Department and the CIA. Patrikov is also a member of the Soros-backed Democracy Alliance and the Council on Foreign Relations. Winder co-founder Jeffrey Katzenberg was the chief executive officer at Walt Disney 
and later co-founded DreamWorks. He is worth almost $1 billion. Katzenberg has been called the new George Soros for his big-time financial contributions of tens of millions of dollars to both the Clinton and the Obama campaigns. Katzenberg has been a speaker at the Aspen Institute and worked directly with President Obama on the passage of SOPA. Katzenberg was a political advisor to Obama, and in 2012, his company received a $430 million tax break. Obama also helped Katzenberg secure a major business deal with the Chinese government of an unknown value to tap into a $2.7 billion film market. Shortly after, Katzenberg's DreamWorks was investigated by the Security Exchange Commission for possible violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act in relation to his dealings with the Chinese government. The investigation focuses on possible bribes Katzenberg and his associates may have paid to the Chinese officials in order to get the deal approved. Katzenberg is a man known to have former President Bill Clinton and former President Barack Obama both visit his home at the same time to hold private meetings with deep-pocketed Democratic donors. Although the Young Turks do not appear to be directly funded by George Soros, they are directly funded by the new George Soros, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and others that are all part of the same wealthy and corrupt circles as the Clintons. As you can see, they are one of the many tentacles of the deep state, promoting division, as they have been selected to play a major role in engineering a key component in the divide-and-conquer strategy to maintain power for political and financial elite. I brought this information to the attention of NewsBuds founder Sibel Edmonds, and this is what she had to say. Well, first, I became familiar not with his face, but with his name, because when I was working uh, with the FBI and going through all these uh, Turkey uh, CIA operations, Gladio B operations related files with persons of interest who were targets of these investigations, uh, the name Cenk Uygur uh, began popping, not at any high level, you know, main target level. He was more of a lower level, parasitic, criminally connected guy with shady Turkish-Israeli organizations that were operating for this particular operation from late 1990s until at least the time that uh, I was fired from the FBI, which was 2002. Um, I was not surprised when he began this information campaign and sabotage against my case during my whistleblowing journey. This is during the period between 2004 and 2008, um, because he knew that I knew, <laughs> because I had been um, speaking uh, about and talking about some of the facts, some of the involved organizations, front organizations, some of them were Turkish organizations. Well, he was involved, Cenk Uygur, again, at the, as a rat, as a lower level rat, nobody significant. But when you're looking at the petty criminal in the bottom of the chain, parasitic guy, that's what he was. So he knew that I was familiar with uh, with those organization, criminal organizations he was involved with. Uh, so I was not surprised when he started attacking me and launched this disinformation campaign against my whistleblowing case while I was single-handedly fighting the George W. Bush administration on all different fronts, state secrets privilege, various gag orders, etc., and then you have to look at this guy's pattern, okay? I mean, when you look at uh, this buffoon, this guy went from ultra-conservative, like heavily Republican, ultra-ultra-conservative. We are looking at, at, at the level of Rush Limbaugh conservative. And boom, overnight, this guy became a liberal progressive. You know, he was reborn as liberal progressive. Uh, the same thing. I mean, the same pattern repeats as itself again. This guy went from, hey, I'm the little alternative guy, um, anti-establishment, um, anti-system, to a guy who began ass kissing, kissing so many asses and begging in order to land a job with mainstream media, MSNBC. You know, it's interesting. You, you see the parallels between this guy and Ariana Huffington. Of course, uh, Huffington uh, always was at a higher level. As I said, this buffoon is like a lower level petty guy. But 
Ariana Huffington had the same thing. And she used to be this very, very conservative, ultra conservative Republican who suddenly was reborn. And this is Ariana Huffington and became this progressive liberal uh, and, and got tied from Republican Party and went to be intimately tied to the Democratic Party. So you're looking at the similar uh, pattern and you see this with, with rats like this, uh, people who change positions. One day they are Republican. The next day they are a Democrat. One day they are progressive Bernie Sanders supporters. A week later they become a staunch Clinton supporters. You see this pattern pattern among these lower level rats. Uh, and as as you can see, when you go and look at this uh, videos, misinformation, propaganda videos he puts out there, and this is Cenk Uyghur of uh, Young Turk, you will see that he has been uh, a pro-coup, the attempted coup in Turkey. Well, again, if you look at his background, Cenk Uyghur and Young Turk, you will see that until 2011, he was a staunch supporter supporter of Erdogan. He could not praise President Erdogan, you know, highly enough. And then you see that the switch gets turned off and then gets turned on in the opposite direction. Starting from end of 2011, he is just constantly launching attacks against Erdogan, and he was a major supporter of the attempted coup. Well, if you look at the year 2011, you will see that this is the year, this was the year, and this is 2011, where the division occurred between Erdogan and CIA's Fethullah Gulen, therefore with the CIA. You know, we have covered this. If you show my probable cause, I went through uh, this entire transformation where President Erdogan went from the greatest leader of the Muslim world, the best man for the civilization in the Middle East, etc., all the way up till 2011, to suddenly he's a dictator, he's an evil man, he's um, a fascist, he's a dictator. Well, when you look at Cenk Uyghur, you would see that he was dancing under the same tunes as the CIA and Fethullah Gulen. And by the way, Cenk Uyghur has always been serving this mullah, this Islamist mullah Fethullah Gulen and his network, without their blessing, he wouldn't have gotten where he has gotten, considering his dim wit and, and, and the kind of stature he had. Uh, so uh, you see that exactly at the same time, he switches position. Again, look at the pattern. I'm a Republican ultra-conservative. I am a Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton lover, Democrat. Oops, no, I'm a progressive liberal and I'm I'm uh, supporting Bernie Sanders. I'm pro Erdogan. Oh, no. Now that CIA and Fethullah Gulen changed course, now I am anti Erdogan. I am an alternative guy. Oops, I went there and kissed asses and sold everything I've got, which is not much for this buffoon. And I landed a job with the NBC, MSNBC. What happened to the guy who was so anti mainstream media? So I am not surprised that that. You know, a guy like that, uh, the buffoon like that, is getting money, whether it's from people like George Soros Foundations or through companies and mega corporations that are intimately tied to partisan politics of Democrats versus Republican or vice versa. In his case, he is intimately tied to the Democratic campaign, and they have now I mean, if you go and look at the headlines, you will see that they are increasing their lobby expenditure. This is for the Democrats, okay, with Russia Gates and, and George Soros is in this group. And if you look at the latest headlines, they are pouring more money into various fake propaganda left outlets. Well, this guy receives this $20 million. Why? You should ask yourself why a buffoon like that would receive this level of money. Then you start going down the chain and try to find out 
who are these companies? Who are they connected to? Who are they affiliated with? And with that, you would have the answer to who this buffoon is, Jane Uyghur of Young Turks. And by the way, I have to make this distinction too. People in Turkey, they know what Jane Uyghur is about, okay? Especially after the attempted coup, I don't believe he's even able to go back to Turkey considering all his activities, covert and overt, against Erdogan per instruction from his bosses who are connected to Fethullah Gulen and the CIA. So I have to say I am not surprised. And I'm so glad that that uh, we are putting out this information, exposing these pseudo-alternatives, these uh, impostures, because they have only one goal in mind, and that goal is divide and conquer. They have to put their bit, they have to play their part in order to achieve the deep states, the shadow government's objective, which is divide and conquer. This is a clip from the Young Turks talking about financial contributions that were made to the Clinton Foundation and the expectations that accompanied those financial contributions. But wait a minute, the part that the rest of the media almost never talks about, but what do the donors get out of it? I understand who the corrupted is, but who are the corruptors? And why do they do it? That's, I mean. That is a very good question. So, what are the expectations of your financial contributors? That is why we here at NewsBud are 100% independent and 100% people funded. Our integrity will never be compromised by money from corporations, their advertisers, the foundations, or the government. It is now more important than ever to support independent media. Thank you all for your support and be careful where you get your news from. Thank you all for watching. Proudly reporting for NewsBud, I'm Spiro.